Hi guys. So we have this question. Let's see how we can break it down. The question reads, two blocks, each of mass 3.5 kilograms, are hung from the ceiling of an elevator as shown in the figure below. If the elevator moves uh, with an upward acceleration A, so the elevator is moving upwards, uh, with a magnitude of this one, 1 1.6 meters per second squared, find the tension T1 and T2. So this is our tension one, and this is our tension two. Then also been told that um, if the string can withstand the maximum tension of this one, what is the maximum acceleration the vector the, the, the vector can have when the, the string breaks? So let's break down the first part first. What we're looking for is the tension in each rope. So to do that, we're going to draw two free body diagrams for both, both of these two objects. For the sake of reference, let's call this M1 and let's call this M2. So if we draw M1, this is our M1 here, like this, what are the forces exerted on M1? So on M1, the forces that we have, we have tension. Remember, there's this tension here pointing in this direction, but there's also this tension here, tension 2 pointing in the opposite direction, like that. So there's tension going up and there's tension going down on object one. So object one will have the following. Going upwards, we have tension one, like that. Going downwards, we have tension two. Now, this is just a tension force. This object is also going to have the weight force going downwards. So the weight force for this particular object, in as much as it has tension, it will also have weight force in the same direction. So let me just draw it here like this. It will also have mg. Okay. So we have those two. Now let's look at the other object. Remember, this is object one. Let me label it m1. Let's focus on the other object. The other object, let me draw it here. This is the other object. So on this object, what is uh, happening there? So on this other object, we have tension. Now remember, for the first object, T2 is pointing downwards. But for this object, T2 will point upwards because tension will always point towards each other. Meaning that, for object two, it will have tension in the upward direction, and this tension is T2. For the same object two, it will have a force going downwards, which is Mg. So I'm not using M1G or M2G, I'm just using Mg because the mass is the same. So there's no need of um, specifying or separating the two. So if that's the case, we can clearly see that this is object M2. So we're going to sum the forces for each object. Now it's important to take note of the motion on where the object is going. So since the acceleration is in the upward direction, it means that these two objects are going up. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to say, let me just do this, I'll create some space. The summation of forces, summation of forces in the y-axis, this is for the first object. So let me just indicate here. This is for M. So in the y-axis for object one, we have these three forces. Since the object is moving upwards, the force in the direction of motion must be positive. So the positive force will be T1 because the object is going upward, so this force is positive. These two will be negative because they are opposing motion. So minus T2 minus Mg is equal to Ma, like that. Then we can substitute what we have. In this case, we can see that uh, we have the mass, we have G, and we have the acceleration. So what we're going to get will be T1 minus T2 will be equals to Ma plus
plus mg. So T1 minus T2 will be equal to, we in fact out mass here, because it's common, A plus G. I think uh, we can also push this T2 to the other side. So to just remind T1 being equals to, um, let's start with uh, T2 plus, it's a negative, it becomes positive that side, M A plus G. So T1 in this case will be goes to T2 plus, remember the mass is 3.5, the acceleration is 1.6 plus g, which we're going to take 9.81. Like that. So let's see what we get. We add acceleration plus acceleration due to gravity multiplied by 3.5. What we're getting is 89.9. Hence, t1 is equal to T2 plus 39.94. So let's call this equation one. So to create equation two, we're going to sum the forces for this object. Let's just bring it here. So summation of forces. So remember this is our summing everything in M2. Summation of forces in the Y is equals to MA. The force which is positive is a T2, so we have T2. The force which is negative is Mg, so positive motion is equals to Ma. If we make T2 the subject, we'll see that T2 is equals to Ma plus M, like that. Then from there, we can easily say T2 will be equals to uh, again, we can factor out mass, so that we have A plus G, which is just the same expression that we have here. So we can clearly see that T2 is equals to 89.94 newtons. Okay, so now that we have T2, we can easily find the value of T1. To find T1, we're just going to substitute in the equation that we've already made, which is what we have already. So we can substitute here. So that to find the value of T1, we're going to say T1 is equals to T2, we have 39.94 plus 39.94. So the value of T1 will easily be, so if we add the two, we're going to obtain 79.94. Newtons like that. So uh, we can actually round off this to be 40, we can round off this to be 80, it's just okay. So we have the two values. Let's see how the question proceeds. So the second part is saying if the strings uh, can withstand the maximum tension of this one, what is the maximum acceleration that the elevator uh, can the elevator have before the string breaks? So you need to note that. The tension is greater on the upper string compared to the lower string. So that is what will cause it to break. Meaning that as uh, the acceleration increases, this tension, which is T1, is the one which is likely going to break first. So we can say that uh, we need to find acceleration. We need to find acceleration when the upper tension is the maximum, which is 85, 85 newtons. So to do that, we're going to get this formula here for T1. Let's pick it up from here. Let's pick it up from here. We can say the formula for T1, we said T1 is equals to T2 plus M, open bracket, A plus G, like that. So if this is the case, we're going to need to find an expression for T2. Now remember, T2 had this formula that we had here. This one here, T2 is equals to M, open bracket, G plus A. So T1 is equals to 
here with this T2, we're going to put M, open bracket, A plus G, like that. Remember, this is what we had here for T2. So we just substitute T2 with that. So plus this expression, which is M, A plus G. Then we're going to say, since we're looking for acceleration, we can simply say uh, T1. So if we do the expansions throughout, since we're looking for A, if we do the expansions throughout, we'll get MA plus MG. Same thing here, MA plus MG. We make acceleration the subject of the formula. Hence, we'll have T1 is equal to 2MA plus 2MG. We want this A here as a subject. So let's rewrite the equation so that it becomes 2MA plus 2MG is equals to T1. So 2MA is equals to T1 minus 2MG. So since we're looking for A, we divide both sides by 2M. So A is equals to T1 minus 2MG divided by 2M. By making a the subject so this is the formula that we're going to get so let's proceed and find the acceleration so acceleration in this case will be equals to t1 or we can just do the substitutions now so where there's t1 we can put 85 minus 2 remember the mass was 3.5 and g is 9.81 like that everything is over 2 times the mass, which is 3.5. So let's see how we can proceed from here. So 85 minus 2 times 3.5 times 9.81. So what we're getting is 16.33. Now this whole thing is divided by 7. So if we divide by 7, the acceleration will be 2.3. 3, 3 meters per second squared. So what does this mean? It means that the maximum acceleration this elevator can move at, if the maximum tension is this one, will be 2.33. So there we have it. That's how we break down this question. Thank you very much. In case you have a question, please feel free to drop it in the comments. Have a good day.